And, and it is a pretty strong report this morning, Robert. Very good report. I mean, I don't think there's anything you can look at that doesn't say this is a real positive versus the last numbers. Hopefully this is a sign that the, the weather uh, impact on GDP was, was factual. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, it looks like we're going to be running at 175 plus, which is where we were throughout 2016. Um, but this was a very good number, and I think that, with the, especially the labor participation rate, people should feel good about it. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, I'm cautious to say it, it definitely is a, it's a good report. It's not a great report. I do want to point out, we, we've been averaging about 200,000. We do, as an economy, need to get back to adding 300,000 jobs a month. That's going to be a yeah. really great report. But overall, a really good report to see wages up. We're seeing the average work week up. Um, labor participation, you know, has still been hovering. We actually ticked down from 63 to 62.9. Mm. And unemployment going down to 4.4% could mean there's less people actually participating in the workforce, and that's still a challenge. Yeah, but Dagan, the, the March number went from bad to worse. We wanted to really focus on the revisions. We got a revision, but it was down 98,000 uh, to 79,000 79, for the March number. Right, uh, six months in those uh, 6,000 job down revision, the net loss in those two months, so that's not good news. But this 211,000 jobs added is above the 12-month run rate, which Stephanie Pomboy mentioned, of 175,000 jobs. Um, it does show an important uptick in the month of April, which is altogether critical, and the unemployment rate falling, which is also uh, a very positive development there. There's not, it, it's very hard to find anything to be really Negative. deeply concerned about. Well, and that's why futures report. right now in, in the markets are relatively flat, but the S&P is ticking a little bit higher. Um, and the Dow's hanging in there about unchanged. Yeah, no reaction here uh, in terms of markets are concerned. Steve Cortez, what, what, you, what do you make of this? Well, look, you know, I, I think you really have to nitpick, to be honest, to find negativity in this report. Uh, this is a terrific report, I think, particularly in context of the last one being so disappointing. I mean, the last one was a strike out of the plate. This is a 400-foot home run, as far as I'm concerned. And I think uh, we can, I'm often skeptical of weather excuses, because this is a massive country. It's always good weather somewhere, bad weather somewhere else. It seems as though the weather excuse, in this case, uh, for last month, mm -hmm. truly was valid. I love the fact that we added retail jobs. What a surprise there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I I think this is a strong report, and I agree with Joni. We need to get back to three, four hundred thousand uh, a month job creation. I do believe we'll get back to that 1980 style growth. First, we have to get tax reform to get there. But given our our current structure of onerous taxation, I think this is terrific, and I think it also backs up what we've seen in corporate earnings. Corporate earnings have been really, really strong. That's sending many key stocks to all-time highs. A lot of tech names, a lot of consumer discretionary names. So the markets are expecting that this kind of growth is going to be the baseline, and then. Up. Steve, let me ask you something. Um, you know, if you look at the GDP numbers, you look at the, the recent Fed statements as more or less steady as you go, you look at these numbers, let's just say we average this year at 175, even though in 15 we were averaging 275, so I don't think we get back there. Right now we have um, the, the Republican economists start talking about 4 plus percent GDP. Most people do not find that realistic. And so how do you square that circle of going from, you know, 1% to, or 2% GDP, which is where most people think around 2%, to this 4% number, based on these numbers, which are just kind of steady as they go? Right. No, listen, it's a, it's a great question, and they have been steady as you go for now, but I think we're about to see a massive paradigm shift once we get tax reform. And what I mean most by that is once we see capital investment, which is something we just haven't seen, CapEx spending by companies, all they've done in this century, frankly, basically since the year 2000, is financially engineer, buy back their own shares, pay out dividends. It's been wonderful, by the way, for the 1%. If you're an owner of assets, it's been a terrific decade. For working Americans, it's been an absolute slog. Trump was a elected largely to change that. And once we change the tax code and incentivize companies to invest in people, in plants, in technology, we're going to see the kind of productivity gains that we haven't seen in this century yet that we used to have in the 80s and the 90s. And that's how we get three, four, I think even 5% growth. I really think that the American economy, you know, tomorrow's the Kentucky Derby. I think the American economy is a horse that has been weighted down. It's a thoroughbred that wants to run. Once we take <laughs> off the Washington weight, that horse is going to absolutely take off. All right, take off. Well, I like that analogy. Uh, Jack Otter, your thoughts? Yeah, so a couple of things here. One, I think that 4.4% unemployment rate 
it sh sheds a lot of light on that discussion between Robert and Steve just then. Look, economists say that full employment is 5%. We are below theoretical full employment. I don't see how you get 400,000 people joining the workforce unless that participation rate ticks up dramatically. And yes, at 4.4%, you expect wages to go up, right? Because there's so much demand for workers. But frankly, I think it's unrealistic. I talked to a lot of money managers. I haven't found one who is building into his model 4%, 5% after right. economic growth. Everyone is thinking 2%. Takes it's not a time. political yeah. thing. It's just we're a mature no, economy Jeff, with an I, aging demographic. You yeah. know, I, I understand that, and I hear that a lot. But by the way, we were a very mature economy in the 1980s, and we were able to grow at 7% under Huge Ronald Reagan. Huge difference, Steve. Here, here are the two big differences. One, women pouring into the workforce, and also baby boomers were at their most productive level. You had this huge bump in people in their 30s and 40s at their most productive level in the workforce. You don't right. have that right now. No, I understand that, and that's why I'm not saying that we're going to get to seven, but I still think we can do dramatically yeah. better than where we are. I think we've almost gotten accustomed, sadly, in this country over the last decade to slow growth. Uh, and what I'm saying is that mediocrity, number one, it's just beneath the potential of America. Yeah. Number two, I think it's causing so many of the problems in our country, whether they're social problems, economic problems, political problems, uh, the divide in our country. Oh, I think so, so much of that is slow it's, it's all about jobs, absolutely. So I every, every right, month, we, we lean on Joni Courtney because she's out there. She knows <laughs> where all of the jobs are. Uh, and you're, you're seeing young people, you know, middle-aged, uh, older Americans come to you looking for work. Where are the jobs right now, Joni? Yeah, there's, um, you know, and, and that is one point, Maria, I have to make. It's all generations, right? This is an interesting yeah, time that we have all generations looking for work. The jobs continue to be in healthcare. It's probably the strongest sector. And, and when I say that, I mean, there's information technology jobs. There's accounting and finance jobs in that healthcare sector. That sector is performing the best. Well, and technology has completely of, changed healthcare. Absolutely. And there's a lot of opportunity there. What I do like about this report, though, is that the jobs have really come back in just about all sectors across the board. So you're seeing the professional and business service sector, even some growth in retail, which is great to see the 6,000 jobs in the retail sector. Um, that's good. But mining, which is the, you know, the oil and gas jobs, those have come back. We talked about it before about, you know, um, that sector was hit so hard in the recession. Um, those jobs have come back. There's a strong demand in the oil and gas field. They had shed so many jobs and be, really were so lean that they were forced to hire back. So across the board, really good growth that just about all the sectors are adding jobs in this report.